Trump or his inner circle just in the past day or so, day or two, I should say, have now tested positive for the coronavirus. Lawmakers, White House advisors, a university president, uh, and they all have something very, very much in common. Here's our chief medical correspondent, Dr. Sanjay Gupta. What you're looking at is the origins of a likely super spreader event. At least eight people, including President Donald Trump himself, are now infected. And that is among those who have had the ability to actually get tested. You can't see the virus, but what is happening during a super spreading event? You know, it's a very rough analogy, but if we think of a campfire and say that that's a person who is infected and releasing virus, it's not like it's the ring around the person that is actually going to be the, the risk. It's those that are on the side where more of the virus is being projected, either through being talking or through the breeze, the air that's blowing it there. But it was also these moments that caught CNN medical analyst Aaron Bromage's eye. When the event finished, when they were all coming up and hugging and shaking hands and saying congratulations, that's where, if I was a betting person, I would be putting my money on of where this occurred. We know that the safety protocol for the event was to test anyone in close proximity to the president. But it wasn't required for everyone attending the ceremony. And it clearly wasn't foolproof. Again, take a look here, where the people who were diagnosed as positive were sitting, not next to each other. Which leads us to again look at what happened right before and right after. Former White House counselor Kellyanne Conway closely leaning in to speak with Attorney General William Barr. Notre Dame president, Father John Jenkins, closely talking to a group of people with no mask. Lots of people closely interacting with their guard down. It can be difficult to pinpoint these super spreader events. This one ceremony, though, is giving us a look at the anatomy of how it happens all the time. Not just here, but anytime people aggregate together in large groups in the middle of a pandemic. There's no doubt that there has been transmission at um, the protests, the political rallies. It, it's just a fact that the virus doesn't discriminate. Just because we haven't documented it doesn't mean it hasn't happened. It's just that we've got an event now that is very visible, well-documented, well-tested, and we're seeing the outcome from it. And Dr. Gupta is joining us now live. Uh, Sanjay, how key, uh, key is it for us to know the date, for example, uh, of the president's last negative coronavirus Test. Uh, tell us why that's so important right now. Well, part of the importance is for him uh, to get, a, get an idea of where he may be in the course of his illness. Wolf, the idea that someone would test positive and immediately start having symptoms like this after, uh, you know, supposed exposure right then is, is very unlikely. Uh, after you get exposed, it takes a while for the virus to, to sort of build up in the body to get to a detectable level. So if we look at the timeline, typically, um, you, you know, you, you get an idea now when someone may have been exposed and then you sort of fast forward five or six days, that's typically when they're gonna develop symptoms. But right in that period, that orange line at the bottom, Wolf, that's critical. In the few days before you start to develop symptoms, so in the president's case, you know, Tuesday, Wednesday, whenever it may have been, that's when he was likely most infectious. And that's going to be key going back and looking at this contact tracing, uh, you know, trying to figure out who might have been exposed to the president. So to try and figure out people exposed and also to figure out his own timeline in terms of his own disease and how it's going to progress. You know, what's so worrisome, uh, Sanjay, is that, and it was a great piece you put forward, that Rose Garden, everybody there, no, very few, if any, people wearing masks, uh, they're all hugging each other, they're talking, they're breathing, and so many of them now have actually come down with coronavirus. Uh, and we don't know where they went from the Rose Garden. They went to their families, their staffs. Right. Uh, they went out and met with people, uh, indeed, not only in Washington, but all over. They went to their, their hometowns. Uh, this thing could really spread as a result of that, right? Yeah, I mean, that, that's what these super spreader events are all about. I mean, if you start to do the math on this, a single person spreading it to, to somebody else, two people maybe, them spreading it, pretty quickly you can have a significant outbreak and it can emanate from one single location. We've seen that in many places around the country, around the world. So that's, that's, that's the real concern here. And I think what was important, you know, it's outside, right? And a lot of people say, well, it's outside, it's fine. Um, it's better that it's outside, but it's not fine. 
the basic rules of, of physical distancing, of masking, of how close you are, I mean, of how long you spend next to somebody, all of that still matters. And as, uh, you know, Aaron Bromage was talking about, think of it sort of like smoke in the air. Got a still day. Maybe that, that, that aerosol just sort of lingers and is potentially infecting more and more people. And then, Wolf, I think the very important point you bring up, every time you have an event like this, oftentimes there's pre-events, right? People get together ahead of time. They may get together after the event as well. That's all part of this and, and could lead to additional spread. That's a, the back to the screen of there, Bill Barr, the Attorney General of the United States. You saw him very close to Kellyanne Conway just uh, a few seconds ago, yeah. uh, uh, and she has coronavirus right now. Uh, don't you think Bill Barr, the Attorney General of the United States, should be in quarantine as a result of his participation in that event alone? He looked very close. It looked like he's had a contact with, with someone with COVID. You know, I, I, I'd love to look at the entire tape and sort of understand it. And I'm sure that's what a lot of the contact tracers are going to do. But again, it's, it's a question of they were obviously very close. I don't know how long they, they stood like that. You want to put some definition around it. Was it a prolonged amount of time? They're obviously within six feet of each other. And uh, so, you know, I think that's what the contact tracers look at. That counts as a close contact. That doesn't. Likely he's going to be tested. But again, the testing, if it's positive, that tells you a lot. You have it, probably. It, you know, it's not a perfect test, but you likely have the virus. If it's negative, uh, you don't really know for sure. You just don't, you, it could be that you're negative as of now. You could still develop a positive test over the next couple of weeks. And, and I don't know where these people have been, but you'd think they would appreciate the importance of simply putting on a mask in a situation like that to, to be on the safe, safe side, uh, but clearly they didn't.